You know, Office of Special Affairs is a unit that exists to protect the church legally in all its survival, in everything it does financially. Just, it's there to firewall the church against government intervention, lawsuits, and very, very bad news flooding out into the world of what goes on inside Scientology. So when abuse after abuse flares up, you shake your head in disbelief. What is OSA doing? Why are they allowing such criminality? The church did everything to get Wikipedia to not have SB Hole up on the web. 320 protests, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's on the web. And when you read it, you think, what? Do we live in the medieval ages? People are locked down in prison with no, with bars on the wall, can't leave, are marched like Auschwitz prisoners, left, right, left, right, to go eat with a security guard in front and a security guard at the back. These are top executives of the church that live in a subhuman condition. Just listen to Mike Rinder describe S.P. Hole. Are you kidding me? Like, for more than a year, I slept on the fucking floor and I was fed slop and I was in a building that had bars on the doors and windows. I wasn't allowed out and I was supposed to sit around in there and circle jerk myself into fucking uh, a new state of existence where now I'm suddenly acceptable to Miscavige because I've confessed to, you know, whatever heinous things satisfied his prurient sense of, of right and wrong. SP means suppressive person. That means the church deems you as a sociopathic, anti-social personality. Listen to Debbie Cook. Yes, I was. One time I was uh, called into a conference room and asked some questions and he ordered his, his secretary to slap me and she um, slapped me so hard I fell fell over into the chairs. Um, one time he, uh, Mr. Miscavige ordered his communicator to break my finger if I didn't answer uh, his question. The punishments are inhumane. Amy Scobie was punished with a purification rundown that lasted eight months till yellow, yellow pus was coming out of her skin. A punishment of being in the sauna five hours a day, taking 5,000 niacin? This is church punishment? I've told my story here and there, but I had to run around a pole 12 hours a day. run 12 hours a day. Your ankles swell, your knees, you hobble along. But that's punishment? This is what, this is a sample of the running program. Do you know that the superpower building on the sixth floor, they have a running track? And they're going to reinstall this torture. What human being should run five hours a day? as a process, as a mental process. You try it. These people selling it for $10,000, $15,000 or whatever it costs at flag. Mm. These are tortures. Back to OSA. OSA is only too aware of what goes on at InFace. Take the story of Maureen Bolstead. On the few occasions that I did manage to run away, I was tackled and brought back physically. 
uh, I mean, one of the men that tackled me was a guy named Chris Guider, who was an ex-professional Australian football player. This is what she was put in isolation for three years at Inpace. And what's Osa doing? Playing the fiddle while Rome burns? Fra la la, not even caring on the legal basics. How legal is it to trap someone in isolation for three years? That's hostage taking, kidnap, abuse. Osa turn a blind eye while the abuse goes on. I want to tell you, I want to tell you about an abuse which really bothered me. At the flag land base, there was a staff MAA. MAA means master at arms to dole out punishment. And he told me this story. A sea old member was punished. And the punishment was that the sandcastle is a restaurant to flag land base in a hotel called the sandcastle. And it butts against the sea wall. In other words, it's all glass and you eat at the restaurant and you have the water right abutting. The new punishment got evolved that a sea org member had to clean the seawall. Whenever you have a seawall or a ship, crustaceans, Klingon, barnacles, different sea animals cling to it as a home. So the sea org punishment was to clean the barnacles and seaweed and animals off the wall of the sandcastle. And something went very wrong. And the sea org member went out to, this at high tide. The punishment is you only do it at high tide when the waves are slapping at you and thrusting at you. This sea org member almost died and was revived near death. In the middle of a sea org atrocity, that was a sea org punishment. There's been another new punishment evolved for people that don't make their money quota. Money! They have to get up at 3 in the morning and run from the Hacienda to the Fort Harrison with SU, these black SUVs with security chase them to sea because you're not allowed to walk. You have to run. This is a mental and torture penalty for not making your money quota. You wake up at 3 in the morning and you run three miles, even if you're 50 years old. You run three miles in the middle of the night. People in Clearwater are asleep, so haven't seen it. So it wasn't just that we got to do the exercises at close order drilling, the reprimands, and then get in a van, go to a renovation site, and work till 2 or 2.30 in the morning on something. One time we dug a, a big tree stub out of the ground. I, it was like, really? Boom, and one time we got taken to where they were building a garage. I, I can't even believe what we were doing in there. I, I, I don't even know what it was, but it was hard. It was like hard labor in the middle of the night. Now, I know that this was current up to a couple of years ago. I can't promise that they're doing it today with all the internet rah-rah, but that is a seal punishment. I know I've told you some rather gruesome stuff in this video, so I'm going to end on a note where I hope you laugh with me. A woman went to flag and it was horrible. It went really bad. It went from bad to worse. The sessions were torture, she said. So she calls her husband and he says, drop everything. Just get out of the Fort Harrison. Escape. Hail a taxi. And she said, but my my designer clothes are the same. I said, leave your designer clothes, your makeup, your hygiene kit. Just get to Tampa Airport. I'll have a ticket, one-way ticket waiting for you. Just get out of there. So she steps onto Fort Harrison Avenue. Fort Harrison Avenue is not like Manhattan where you see a taxi every five seconds. And the luck of the devil, a taxi pulls up and she says, Tampa Airport. <laughs> and he looks at her. She has no luggage. You don't get on a plane with out even a carry-on, nothing. And he said, we, we go to your hotel to pick up your luggage? She said, no, no, Tampa Airport. And he looks up from his taxi and he goes, ah, ah. 
Church of Scientology, Fort Harrison. No luggage. Town by airport. <laughs> the taxi driver knew. When you say Tampa Airport outside the Fort Harrison, it's okay if you don't have luggage. You are fleeing the flag land base. Mm -hmm.